Hey everybody, welcome back to 10% True. Just before you get stuck into this episode, I wanted to let you know that in 2024, I'm going to be republishing my book, Red Eagle's America's Secret Migs. That's the story of the 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron and the program Constant Peg that exposed American fighter aircrew to secretly acquired and operated MiGs in the Nevada desert in the 1970s and 1980s. The book's been out of print for a while. It goes for crazy prices online, but I'll be republishing as a softback exclusively through my website, 10 percenttruecom If you're thinking about supporting the channel, you'd like to buy the book for yourself or even as a gift, please do go and place a pre-order. I'll put a link in the description. All pre-orders are going to be 25% off and I'll make sure I personally inscribe and sign your copy for you. Anyway, that's the plug for the book. I'll let you get back on with enjoying this episode. Take care. You've referenced it a couple of times now, just to check then. So this this time where you said there wasn't an envelope and then you, you had the one opportunity to discover that maybe there was. Um, was that yeah. the one where you were talking about where you pushed the stick or is that a different... Are you talking about? No, no. This is a uh, this is a different one. I, I got uh, I got caught out uh, by being um, so um, confident in the aeroplane and my ability in the aeroplane as well. I was on my first squadron, so I, I had this OV10 guy in the back, and I was working him up a little bit, and uh, he was coming on great in the air to air environment. That sounds very patronising. He was a very sharp guy um, in his job as a as a fac A. We were just trying to turn him into a into a fighter wizard. So we went out against one of these young uh, Marines who was who was on workup, and uh, and we do the prescribed uh, trip. And a lot a lot of the workup would see um, one of the aeroplanes pretending to be a bandit, and the other one being the fighter. And we do perch work, you know, where one would be out the front, you turn in, and and that was that. And the guy out the front would maybe not be allowed to use afterburner on this particular. Um, split in order to give the guy confidence that he can fight his aeroplane and, and, and blah, you know, that sort of thing. And then we'd, uh, we'd just kind of have at it and do Hornet against Hornet. But one of the exercises we did was called the Guns Defence, Guns D it was called. So um, you start out the front uh, uh, like this. Uh, the aeroplane comes in uh, from about a mile and a half away, taking shots. You break into them, and as he saddles up for guns, um you do a um you do a hard break into him if he comes nose off you're probably going to end up going into a rolling scissors uh, defensive maneuver like that but the general thing is he's going to keep the sight on and you go into a guns d which is 135 degrees angle of bank pull hard to seven and a half g which is what our g limit was and then see what happens after that and then the guns d generally gets knocked off it was that initial maneuver and to make sure you didn't go through the base heights and 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 that sort of thing there oh god i say if he goes nose off you go into a rolling scissors the hornet doesn't do a normal rolling scissors it does this batshit crazy 3d tree rolling scissor extravaganza you know it's just it's just not it's not real uh so uh just want to uh throw that out there so anyway i um i set it up and he does a guns D first. I put him under pressure, and then I'm going to give him the opportunity to take advantage of uh, of somebody. So I might end up going through a guns D as to see whether he can track me through that that guns defence. So anyway, the idea is he's done everything on numbers. It's gone really well. So what I want to do is I want to mix mix it up for him. So the problem that he had was he was great when it ran on rails, like we all are. But when something unusual happened, he kind of went to pieces a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is introduce the unusual to him, but without telling him. So I stand, I stand up uh, out the front and I start the turn and he comes in. And what I do is I do a little bit of deception. Uh, I call no joy, uh, meaning I've lost sight of him, which which I haven't. And I, I don't pull as much as I normally would do. So uh, my airplane is not going to come across like that. He's it's going to go like that. He's going to think, oh, my God, I'm hacking the corner here. So he's going to take a bigger bite of the cherry, which is exactly what uh, what he did. It's just a little bit of deception that we we uh, played around with. Um, and he'll end up, when I break back into him properly, with a shitload of angle off, uh, which he won't be able to track through the guns, D. So he'll come nose off, and instead of me doing this, I'm going to do this very, very slow speed 
uh, flick back to the uh, to the left to see if I can flush him out of the front. What he should do is take his energy vertical and and leave me for dead, but he won't. I guarantee he's gonna he's gonna uh, bite off on it and then not be able to uh, to deal with it. Nobody's ever done this uh, uh, before, so he's never seen anything like this before. So that's right. So I tell the guy in the back, "This is what I'm going to do," and uh, he kind of goes, "Okay, Tug," you know, because you know he's he's kind of learning on the job as uh, as it is. And um, I said, "You know, it's going to be a lot of G snapping, but the other way." So just be ready, so you don't crick your neck and all that. He takes a huge bite, okay, and uh, and then I come hard in towards him, and as he flies through, I flicked the aeroplane left, full back stick, full left aileron, and full rudder. Um, by and uh, I was back at idle at this point to try and make the closure even more. Slammed the throttles to burner at exactly the same time, and the left hand engine surged. Uh, so, um, this thing with jet engines, you know, flame out the back very good, flame out the front very bad. So, we had this huge flame out the uh, out the front, and the aeroplane yawed, uh, flicked, and we departed. And uh, I mean, you, you go in some to depart a Hornet, but we departed. The bloody AOA warning was uh, was on. Uh, the um, the displays come up telling you which way to point the stick after it's departed uh, and such like that. And we've got an engine that's uh, that I've got to uh, I've got to shut down because because uh, it surged. There was all all very very unpleasant. Um, and then I, um, I I just let go of the stick. And uh, and the aeroplane recovered itself. So um, it, it, it obviously thought, uh, you know, the chimp finger baboon in the front has let go. I'll rise my turn now. It recovered uh, for us. And no kidding, this, this sounds like some uh, crap Top Gun story. Uh, it's not. No kidding. He did fly out the front, okay? And as I was cracking on, shutting down the left-hand engine, I took a sidewinder shot on him and... Uh, uh, and shot him down, you know, because a kill's a kill uh, when it uh, when it comes to it. And then uh, relit the left hand engine. Apologised to the uh, to the guy in the back, um, and uh, uh, we were very we were very quiet um, uh, flying back. And then uh, in the debrief, you know, we, we were fessed up to what uh, what we were uh, what we were doing. Uh, the other guy shoved his uh, shoved his tape in. And there it was. Our aeroplane went like that, with a big flame coming out the front, and then departed. And then the next thing is he flashed the uh, flash past us. So it looked pretty spectacular on the uh, on the film. But uh, oh god, we were shitting ourselves. Um, not not my predecessor, not his, but the one before. I think it was the very first Hornet exchange. The guy had flown out of Hawaii. I mean, what an exchange! Yeah, F 18s in Hawaii at Kaneohe Bay, and. Um, He'd uh, he departed a Hornet, and he was a very capable X Lightning and Phantom guy. He tried every spin recovery action that he'd ever been taught in his Royal Air Force career, and ended up ejecting out of the Hornet. I mean, he was very he was a cool guy, nice guy, and a very capable pilot. You know, uh, I get in there, uh, depart the aeroplane, and just kind of let go and uh, and got away with it. You know, so uh, yeah, that was uh, that was my. That was my one time spearing outside the envelope. What's the, uh, or, or are there any re- repercussions on you for doing that then? So, did, did you, my, my understanding of the Navy and Marine culture is that, you know, they're, you know, if it's if it's not written that you can't do it, then you can give it a go. It's yeah, slightly, yeah, slightly yeah. different. So, so were, did anybody come and have a word with you about that? Did you have a word with yourself about that? Yeah, yeah. So, I've always been a, a kind of uh, uh, mea culpa uh, sort of, uh, sort of guy. So if I do something wrong, it, uh, I, I'm always the first to point it out in a debrief because I think if you do that, it takes the sting out of it. You, you know you're going to get um, railed on uh, for this, but uh, if you take the sting out of it first, it's not quite as bad. But afterwards, it, it's worse because you're the person that is your biggest critic, or you should be, hmm. um, and therefore I always beat myself up over these uh, over these things. Bearing in mind, I was the I was actually the duty adult on that trip, uh, so I was the even though I had God, I probably didn't even have two hundred hours on the Hornet at that point. I was the experienced air combat instructor on the uh, on the trip, and so I suppose part of it in the debrief is 
you uh, you role model how you want people to debrief as well. And mm. uh, the start of the debrief was me holding my hand up. I apologize to my backseater in public in the uh, in the debrief and to the other guys um, that uh, this is what I did. This is what I tried to do. Yeah, all right. I could have gone. Wasn't my fault that the engine surged, but I didn't. I said uh, I tried something uh, stupid. Not stupid. I tried something unusual uh, that um, the aeroplane couldn't handle. I abused the aeroplane, and you know what? It slapped me in the face, and I probably deserved uh, deserved that. I'm glad we came out of it. Um, this is, uh, you know, a lesson for me more than anybody else. But this is not quite the carefree handling airframe and engine that uh, that maybe I I thought it was. Um, I don't think uh, I didn't get any. Didn't even have to talk to the training officer or anything like that. Shared it around uh, around the squadron, particularly the Australian guy because he was. Uh, you know, more akin to uh, to Wells, and uh, and he was very experienced. He was a thousand hour guy, so um, yeah, just chatted through it with uh, with him as well. 